What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna take a look at the number one cause of why your espresso sucks. All right, so why does your espresso stink? Why is it hard to dial it in? Why do you have ugly channeling looking shots, under extracted, over extracted, whatever you might think your uh, espresso is tasting like, why is it not very good? Well, I'm gonna tell you their number one fix that will help you make better espresso guaranteed. Now, if you already are using this, well, then you're probably just SOL and I apologize. No, not really, we'll do more in the future. But this is for the majority who don't already have this. I'm not asking you to buy something for 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 100 bucks, no. Instead, the one thing that's going to absolutely change your espresso game is a WDT tool. Now there are ones that are much nicer, have higher quality, arguably over-engineered, that you can buy for 50, 60 dollars. I'm not telling you to buy those. Definitely don't buy the ones with thick needles. Definitely don't buy the ones with the hoops on the end. You wanna get something that's cheap. I have a friend who has been making WDTs more and more affordable for people. This is one that if you're in the United States, you can get for $1, all right? Now let me show you how that's possible. And then we're gonna talk about the benefits of the WDT. If you wanna skip forward to that, do it below. But for those of you who are interested in this, I got an envelope in the mail today. And the envelope had this, all right? It was just a letter in the mail. So it was just a stamp in order to get it to me. Now, when you open this up, I'm gonna take this tape off because there's like a business card looking thing here. What is this? <laughs> oh, wow, this is really cute. J. Kim Makes. That is the branding of my friend. Um, anyway, it's a 3D printed size of a business card. All you do, and there's instructions right here. Bow! Instructions, okay? And you're just gonna pop these out like so. They're just held together by little pieces of 3D printed material. You just pop them all out, all right? Like this, this, you can be all good. You can be rough with it, you can be soft with it, whatever you want. Boom, look at that. Now I'm not gonna construct this on camera because putting the needles in takes a little bit of time, but essentially these are all the pieces you need plus the needles that come with it. I recommend doing the 0.3 or the 0.35 needles if you decide to order from him, but you get them here. And then using the instructions, you start to put it together and this is what you get. Now the distance between the furthest needles is 29 millimeters. You want less distance between it, you can shave them down, but 29 is half of the 58 millimeter portafilter. If you're wanting it for your 54 millimeter, you can just shave it down if you want to 27 millimeters, so that 27 times two is 54. So you can kind of do with it what you will, but uh, they are really pointy because they're acupuncture needles. Anyway, if you're watching this and you're like, why do I need to do that? This is why. WDT is the number one most effective way to distribute your coffee. Now you may be thinking, oh, but I have those levelers. It's so easy, I just spin it in there and you're good to go. Now let me tell you something. Talk about something that is a waste of money. Those things, and I'm gonna be strong here, I know there's gonna be hate in the comments below, but you can come at me all day because there have been multiple studies to back me up on this. But those things, not only are they not helpful, not only are they a hole in your wallet, but they will harm your extraction. So essentially what you're doing when you're using those is you are compressing that bed in whatever design the bottom of your leveler is. And they're not distributors, so don't let people call it a distributor. It's not distributing the whole coffee. It's leveling the top of the bed and it's a compacting it in certain areas. So let's say there's a cross on the bottom and you put it into your bed of grounds, it's gonna cause a compression where that cross is. Then when you spin it, the area that's loose is going to be compressed on top of the compressed areas. And so you're gonna have a very tumultuous bed. So it's gonna cause a lot of channeling, a lot of issues. If you're not using a leveler, if you're not using a WDT, if you're not doing anything but stock fleth method, then all you're really doing with stock fleth, which is just what you see baristas doing with their finger, is you're grooming the top part of the puck, which is not gonna be helpful for the bottom part. You're gonna get a lot of channels. There's no real way to fully distribute the whole bed of coffee unless you do deep WDT. Now I'm gonna put some articles below that kind of show my point on this and some other people who are practicing it and putting some data behind it that I've been analyzed in. Anyway, it consistently will get you higher extractions than any other method, so I have that below. But now let's go into, well, how do you do WDT? Can you prove to me that this is gonna work better? Yada, yada, yada. So let's go ahead and pull a shot. I'm gonna pull a shot and just tamp and pull. Then I'm gonna pull a shot. I'm gonna use WDT, WDT, and I'm gonna pull. And I'm gonna let you watch the bottom of it. Granted, don't be fooled and think that if there are no sprays, that no channeling is going on. And also don't be fooled that if there are a couple of sprays that you have horrible channeling. 
Channels happen in every espresso extraction. You can't stop it. Even if you have a beautiful, perfect looking shot with no sprays, it comes to the middle immediately and it looks just so perfect, you're still gonna have channels in that bed, okay? It, just because it's not spraying doesn't mean anything. You could have a channel right in the middle. It's not gonna be able to spray because of the viscosity of everything coalescing right in the center is going to override that one channel squirting out. You typically have those squirting channels on the edges, on the periphery, where there's less for that squirt to get through. That sounds weird saying squirt multiple times. I've also been playing Pokemon lately. Squirtle is awesome. Okay, except I dominate it with my Pikachu, um, which I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, Pikachu's a terrible character to have. Well, I'm playing Pokemon Yellow, and I feel like it's weak sauce if you put Pikachu on the bench, okay, if you're playing Yellow. So, yes, I have Pikachu, and Thunder at four, level 41 is pretty baller. All right, so I'm gonna get these shots prepared, and the first thing you're gonna watch is the shot pulling where I literally just grind. I'm gonna grind it straight from the niche into the port filter. I'm gonna tamp without prepping. I'm gonna do a second one. I forgot to say this earlier. I'm gonna do a second one. I'm gonna finger distribute, and we're gonna pull, and I'm gonna do a third one where I do WDT, and I will talk about that with a Weiss distribution technique then. And so here's the first shot. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to tamp it as is without any distribution. All right. So let's see how this shot pulls. So as you saw there, the streams were not coming together very easily. It took a while for them to coalesce, and also they were off to the side quite a bit because the water was going to the path of least resistance. It was over-extracting one side, under-extracting the side that had the majority of the compaction. Now if we look at the top of this puck, you're going to see this quite clearly. As you see here, we have divots here and here because the water was over-extracting this area. If you notice the big clump, that was there, the mound was more over here, so when I tamped, the water wanted to run the path of least, re least resistance. All right, second shot. I'm gonna just pop this in. And I'm gonna take the collar off. And I'm simply going to flatten it using my finger, using the stock flat style method. We're just flattening it, flattening it around. Boom, all right. So now we have the flat bed upon which we can tamp. So as you saw on that shot with the same end dose, the same everything, the shot took actually a couple seconds longer. And it's because we actually were able to distribute a little bit more properly so it wasn't channeling as heavily. So we had, uh, but it was still channeling as you saw. You had a, a lot of drips coming out from a lot of different areas and it wasn't coalescing quickly and it also wasn't even, it wasn't in the middle, okay? So of course this is not conclusive evidence. That's why I'm putting below uh, in the caption some of these studies. But I want you to know that through my testing personally as well, you're gonna be able to taste a big difference. These are just not the ideal way to get an even extraction through all those grounds. So when we pull this out and take a look at it, all right, yet again, you have kind of a divot here. It's not as bad though because I used my finger to uh, wipe around it. So it's a little bit more flat on top, but it still wasn't able to have a great extraction because the bottom part, which we can't see, is where a lot of those uh, inconsistencies are probably at. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use the WDT. We're gonna take a look at the extraction, which again is not an end all be all, but you're gonna see visually, I wanted to show visually how you can see it come together a lot more consistently, which is a sign of a good extraction. It's not necessarily end all be all, but it is a good sign. It's a sign of a good extraction, okay? And all right, now we're gonna do it with the WDT. I've got the coffee in there, and then I'm gonna do how I WDT. I'm taking 0.3 millimeter needle, I'm starting at the bottom. I'm doing small circles like this while I'm doing a full revolution around the basket and I'm working my way all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to give it a tap to collapse. 
and there we go. Look how flat that is. And I've distributed the bottom, the middle, and the top with these thin needles. Now, if you do much thicker than this, if you do like uh, over 0.4 millimeters, you're going to get lines, essentially, so pre-channels in your bed. And so you're going to actually encourage channels. So if you use paper clips, if you use sewing needles, if you use anything along those lines, you're actually going to do more harm than good. So there is that. I've, I've tapped it. Now it's time to tamp. Get that in there nice and level. Make sure you're always tamping very level. All right, so let's take a look at this extraction. Well, that shot took about nine, eight or nine seconds longer than the other shots, which is an indicator that it was the water was working through more of the grounds as opposed to channeling. So we were able to extract higher based off of that, which doesn't always tell the same story, but we can make a, a correlation there. We can make a, you know, a guess that it was likely because the water was going through more of the grounds more evenly, so it took longer for the extraction to occur, uh, which typically does happen if you're heightening your extraction, it likely will take longer. And you can test this by doing the whole, um, you can test this at home by taking your grounds, not doing anything to it, tamping it, putting it in, and then well, uh, doing the WDT and just testing that side to side and you'll see a longer extraction when you do WDT because you're having a higher extraction. Uh, and as you saw, the beginning took a little longer uh, with the saturation, but then they came together quite immediately for a more central extraction because you had more of the uh, extraction going on throughout all of the puck. So it came to the center more quickly because the liquid is coming out of all of those holes more evenly so it could come together with that weight and find its way to the center, which shows a little bit more of an even extraction. All right, now that we have those visuals out of the way, I'm gonna just quickly show you how I specifically do WDT. I talked about it shortly just then, but essentially it's very simple. All I'm doing is I'm taking the tool, I'm going to the bottom of the basket, so let's assume this is the basket, going to the bottom of the basket, and then I'm doing Let's get my hand out of the way. I'm doing small rotations like I'm the earth. I guess technically this would be a rotation, but I'm calling this a rotation with one revolution. You see that? And I go around and around as I start to come up. So I'm going down, I'm going around, around, and I'm slowly coming up and up and up until I groom the top with the needles. Now you may be sitting at home thinking, that's too much time, that's too much effort. Well. One way or another, you need to distribute your bed, whether that's tapping the sides to let it, uh, let it shake down, whether that's doing the stock fleth method or, or any other way that you might be distributing, taking a tool and twisting it, they're all gonna take roughly the same amount of time. So in the amount of time that it takes you perhaps to do it with your finger, I can sit here and stock fleth, or stock fleth. LOL. I can sit here and do my WDT, all right? And the more you do it, the more consistent you'll get with it. And this is, I promise you, is the best way to be consistent in your extractions, to heighten your extractions, and to have delicious tasting espresso. This is the number one thing I see people not doing at home, with especially with cheaper grinders that give you a lot of clumps. When you have a lot of clumps, this helps to declump. It also helps to reorganize the bed, and it's going to give you a better extraction. Trust me on this. And so check out J. Kim. I'll put a link to him below. And he made this uh, initially. This was, this was also the tool he made that you've seen me use in a lot of my videos. Uh, he did this for the Espresso Aficionado Discord, which I'll link below as well if you want to join that. He made it for, as a community effort. The community themselves made this together. And then he came out and made this one that can be shipped for $1, including everything. So uh, hit him up. And then a, a, just a, a shameless plug for him. He is accepting tips. Um, and it's because he's trying to save up to buy a Coffee Tech grinder. So tip him well whenever you buy this. You know, if, if you were thinking about buying a $10 WDT, give him nine and you saved a buck and then he gets a nice tip or give him five, whatever it is, and you're still saving money. Anyway, I cannot endorse this enough. I freaking love this tool. My tool of preference has been this for quite a while, but this is also a fantastic one right here. So give that a shot. Check it out in the caption below. Uh, again, please hit that like, that subscribe, give it a, a thumbs up, whatever it might be. Uh, hit the Patreon, check that out, and you can join me on the Discord where I chat with people constantly. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks so much for join, uh, joining, and I hope you grew something tasty. Cheers.